if you want to ride faster on your local hills and who doesn't, then saving weight from your bike will definitely help. And here's a few tips to save weight for no spend. The first one is to ditch your water bottle. They're really heavy and you only need one, right? The second, get rid of your saddlebag. Those tools are really heavy and in an emergency, you can throw them for a taxi, no sweat. And the third one, well, go to the toilet before a bike ride. A real classic, that one. Okay, all joking aside, the best way to save weight on your bike are some nice new wheels. Because after the frame and a group set, the wheels represent the biggest component by weight. And more than saving weight from your bike, wheels can really impact the ride quality and performance of your bike. And talking of lightweight, these are the brand new NV 2.3 wheels, which weigh just 1,197 grams, which is just nuts for a full carbon fiber, tubeless ready disc brake wheel set, the lightest company has ever made. But will they help me get my local climbs faster? There's only one way to find that. Let's hit the road and go for a spin. So I've been riding these wheels for the last couple of weeks on all my local climbs and roads here in the Cotswolds. And let me tell you, there's no shortage of good climbs to put wheels like these through their paces. And let me tell you, they absolutely shine on my climbs. They feel incredible. They feel electric. They make me feel fitter, a better version of myself. Just incredible performance. So good. For mountain goats and weight weenies, these wheels would definitely flatter your fitness. Just amazing. I've got the wheels on my giant TCR and they saved a ton of weight over the deeper section wheels I've been using for the last year. The MV Foundation 45s and the Zip 303S wheels. And compared to those deeper section wheels on those steeper climbs, the acceleration feels way better. They feel way more instantaneous in terms of how they take your power and transfer it into forward motion. And when you are grinding up your steeper climbs, crawling in the lowest gear and get out of the saddle, Boy, do they come alive. The stiffness, the responsiveness, just means they surge forward in a way that a deep session wheel rarely does. While it's not the most scientific testing, riding the same climbs with a power meter and heart rate, and these wheels compared to deep session wheels, these are definitely faster. A few kilometers here or there, a bit less power output required, and sometimes even a higher gear. They are climbing faster. They're helping me to climb faster, shall I say and get to the top of my local climbs quicker and I have set some PBs on local climbs. So for me, that says enough that these wheels are definitely fast when the road points. Which might not surprise you, lighter wheels are faster when going uphill. But it's the way they feel, that's just incredible. They're giving the bike such a feathery lightness, a high level of responsiveness to your power output. Just incredible sensation. So for the steeper climbs, these wheels do make a tangible benefit, at least in my experience, riding all my local roads that I know, love, and some of them I do hate quite a bit. So they do make a big difference. These wheels are clearly fast on my local hills, even with me powering the bike. And it's all thanks to low mass. The front rim on its own is just 275 grams and the whole wheel set is less than 1200 grams. Thanks to your shallow carbon rims, 24 spokes front and rear, and the company's own high quality hubs. And yet, despite that lack of weight, there's no skimping on that pursuit of performance. And just like the company's much deeper wheels, we have a front rim that's shallower than the rear rim, just to extract a bit more performance and a bit more aero. So 28 versus 32 at the back here. They're also very wide for such a lightweight wheel set too. 21 on the inside, which plays well with a wide range of tires. From a 27 I have here, which is the optimization for these wheels, or down to a 25 and up to a 32, giving you a wide range of choices for road racing, mountain climbing, or light gravel and all road action as well. So clearly these wheels are fantastically lightweight and they climb extremely well and flatter whatever levels of fitness you have. But while they're fantastic going up, they also need to be good everywhere else going down a hill and flat. Now how do you compare to an aero wheel when you are going hammer and tongs? On the flatter roads in between the climbs, they clearly don't have the aero benefit of their deep session wheels. And at high speeds, 
you can feel a difference. A deep stretching wheel, make no mistake, is faster when you're absolutely smashing along, really holding that high pace. And that difference between these shallow wheels and a deep session wheel, at least taking MV's testing with a pinch of salt, of course, is quite significant. You might expect a climbing wheel like this to be compromised in other aspects of ride performance. But comfort is fantastic from these wheels, helped by the fact I'm running a 27mm wide MV tube tyre at super low pressures. The roads that I have to ride on are far from smooth, rough, gravel, potholes, you name it, these roads feature it all. But these wheels and these tyres do deliver a very smooth ride. Smoother, I reckon, than a deep session wheels. So comfort, ride quality is fantastic. A real silky, smooth, supple ride quality that absolutely feels amazing on my local roads. These wheels are designed and optimized entirely around tuner tires using a hookless bead. Now MV have been doing hookless on their wheels for many years. First on their mountain bikes and then on their road bike wheels and going forward, all their wheels are hookless and tubeless only. And for me, as a fan of tubeless, that is no issue. I'll be using these MV 27mm wide tyres with orange sealant inside and they've been fault free, no hassle. Installation is a breeze, as easy as an inner tube and clincher tyre setup with a normal track pump. Air loss is minimal from one ride to one week to the next. And touch wood, I've not had a puncture yet. And the ride quality of these is absolutely fantastic. Really delicious ride quality on my local. And another thing I love about the wheels, they due to that shallow section rim. They're super stable in windy, gusty conditions. No buffeting, no crosswind instability from these at all. They are rock solid. The 24 spokes in each wheel are ample to assure plenty of stiffness for my body weight. There's no flex, no disc brake rub, nothing negative like that. They're also super solid on the descents as well. Really planted, fantastic in the corners. All that stiffness means you can really lean on them in the high speed bends. So a fantastic all round wheel set. These MVs are crazy lightweight then, but not the only option in the lightweight wheel market right now. And it's worth talking about these. These are the Raval Alpinist CLX two wheels. And you can see a full video review on these linked down below. And there's a lot in similarity, it's worth talking about how to compare. They're both very lightweight, but the MVs are just a smidgen lighter. They both use a shallow carbon rim, bladed spokes, and compact hubs, but the Raval hubs are definitely smaller. But there are some key differences. The first one is the fact the MVs have a hookless bead design, while the Ravals have a hooked bead. And that means these are tubers only, but these are tubers, which they are right now, or you can use a normal inner tube and clincher tyre setup. These also have a higher pressure rating for a tuber setup as well. So if you're put off by the low pressures required on a hookless setup, the Ravals might be a choice for you. There's also the price. These are £2,500 versus £3,100. So quite a price difference. When it comes to ride performance, they are unsurprisingly very similar. They both go uphill like a stab rat. But on the flat roads, the Ravals with a slightly deeper rim just take the edge, just a little bit faster when the aero benefits kick in at higher speeds. And when it comes to ride quality in terms of smoothness and suppleness, I think the MVs just take it. The tyres are very similar width, 26 versus 27, but very different construction, obviously. They're both tubeless using the same low pressures, but for me, these offer a smoother ride quality, although swapping the tyres might change the difference a little bit, but based on the setup here, using the company's own tyres, these are definitely smoother and a nicer ride quality on my local rough roads. So clearly, if you love riding up hills as fast as you can, and you want the ultimate climbing wheel set, that disc brake and tube is ready, these MV 2.3s are tough to beat. And if you want to see a video on how to climb better with Simon Warren, the author of the 100 Climb Books, then check the video right here. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button down here. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon.